I so yes, I think we have a a good solid idea. We have a roadmap planned out. We've had uh, multiple meetings. We're running a few more to get all of us on the same page to, you know, um, run the first steps. You know, it's kind of like figuring out where to start. Hello, welcome back to Metaverse DGen. I'm Lion. I'm on man Raptor, and we have four guests here today, bo boys and girls. Hopefully, you're beyond that. And they are starting from the left, going to the right. I'm VR Voice Smith. Oh, yeah, you with the blue hair. Blue and black hair. <laughs> you're next. Oh, I'm Zark. I <laughs> to my mic was muted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh boy! And I am Rexon. Oh. I have been on here previously. You have. Same with Voice mm -hmm. Smith. Yes, you. Uh huh. And I'm Kieran Rose. Oh, thank you, folks, for joining us. It's it's a pleasure to have you on and actually get to speak and meet with you. Thank you for your time. Yes, it is. Uh huh. Oh, so what is it you folks do here in this virtual landscape? We make um, games and nightclubs. Oh, how did you, all okay. that get started? Like, what is the group you like? Because you guys are under group uh, Quantum Networks, if I got that correctly. Quantum Networks, yeah. So that's right. Yeah, so that was a uh, uh, Rose and myself. We had um, linked up and started talking about doing DJ stuff, and we decided making a world. Um, now we have other people that are interested and it turned into us wanting to uh, build games mm. to uh, a higher level. Oh, so what got Quantum Networks started? Like, where, where are the origins of Quantum Networks? So what originally happened was I made something out of a bad thing that happened in my life. And then I contacted Zark to build a memorial for this person that I lost. And then that didn't end up happening. And we were like, well, let's do something fun, right? Build a club world and get live DJs in there as well. Because we had originally went over to VR Underground and checked that out. And I showed Zark and he was like, I like what's going on here. I want to do something like this too. So we came up with Quantum Networks and we're doing something similar to that, except we have the only Quest compatible world that has multiple venues for clubbing. Oh, mm. wow. So ah, how does nice. a multiple venue Quest world work, may I ask? So we have multiple venues put in the world for different clubs that will either volunteer their time or they'll do two events a month in their venue. They come to us to build them a venue in our world. We get our... Well, we... we how would I word this? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically Wow, he gets paid. <laughs> I thought he so, got yeah, paid basically... for mind reading. <laughs> yeah. So basically we <laughs> we we sponsor them a club and with the club that they use or the venue that they use, we get promotion through that. So it's a win-win yes. for both their community yeah. and, and also ours. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing that's very nice about it is we, you know, we talk to the other club. We get to we get to know like know them and get to talk to them for a while before we build build the venue. Um, and then once we build the venue, they go through the the walkthrough process and then they get to check out the venue so they get sure they they get a venue that um they enjoy. But we've been um building some clubs for venues currently and we've got a few that are in the works that are close to completion oh so right, i got a question i got a question i got a question for him that's going cool, eh? okay since you're you're four you're four gentlemen and everything else like this how did each one of you guys meet to do what you do now 
Because that's the biggest thing. It just this is bump head. Somebody had to start something. How'd you guys get started? By how'd you run into each other in VR? That's the biggest thing. So, so uh, like right. Rose said. Like Rose said <laughs> okay, uh, here we. <laughs> like, okay. I, like Rose said, I was introduced to him through one of my friends, uh, like a mutual friend, because uh, she knew that I could build worlds, and Rose needed a world built for uh, his friend as a memorial. So, you know, they had asked me to build it for them. And I was like, sure, you know, like, I'll, I'll do that. And um, went through and, and I built a little bit of it. But then that didn't really go through. So we started playing video games, just kind of hanging out, like, hours and then talking about, like, uh, making venues and uh, um, just kind of just hanging out, whatever. And then we released the, then we released QN. We sat down for, like, three days, like, thinking about the name, like, color-wise, like, kind of putting this together as a theme. And it just came together in that sense. And then Rose got um, Aquafire um, involved. And that guy just went crazy with promotion. Rose went crazy with promotion. And then these two came. And then, I don't know, like, that's more of a I Rose question I, at that point. Because Yeah, I I met Aquafires. And then Aquafires introduced me to Kieran. And then I met Zark. And then after being in Quantum Networks for a while... Um, I was introduced to Rection, and then Rection got involved on the, the team as well. Oh, yes, I was I was connected by a friend of mine named Rocking Horse, and she knows a lot of people. And some of the times she would just randomly randomly send a message to other people, and be like, "I know this person. This person can help you." So I just get traded around communities oh. to help people with <laughs> development okay. for worlds, advisory, props and other things as well as video games because i came on qn to do to help them make a game since i've made my own game which i've told you before about velocity vr hmm. uh, and they wanted mm -hmm. help with making their game uh, so i am head manager at qn or head dev uh, to train all of our developers but i met by smith oh Wow. So, yeah, it's been like a really crazy crossfire of paths. Wow. Indeed. Sometimes VR chat's quite a small okay. world. <laughs> How did you guys get involved into VR chat to begin with, may I ask? Right, so Everybody was... looks at each other like they got the answers <laughs> right on their foreheads. What the hell? Do you know? I don't know. What the hell? I don't know how I got here. Holy shit. This is great. I like this method. This is no, fucking so great. Really keep going, boys. So the reason the reason we can't, the reason we keep looking at each other is to make sure no one else talks first. <laughs> <laughs> so you know stuff on the this. But I originally got in Go here first. because all right. I originally got in here because I was watching YouTube one day and I came across a YouTuber and his name was Ryan and he was doing little skits and stuff all in VR chat. And I was like, hey, this is something that I kind of like to do. So I originally got in on desktop, didn't really like it because I didn't have VR. And then both me and a couple of my friends got VR and got in here and we enjoyed it. Enjoyed playing all of the games and meeting new people. Oh. Well, I got into VR many years ago, even before VR chat existed. And I was in alt space oh. uh, long ago. Uh, before Neos, I, I think Neos was around there or beginning, um, but Allspace was about eight years ago. And I was in Allspace, and I heard a lot of people in Allspace going to VR chat, and I was like, oh, what's that? And I was like, it's like this game, but you can upload avatars. And I'm like, oh, well, that sounds nice and more customizable than what I'm in right now and looking like a, a Wii character. Uh, because Allspace's characters are basically a more primitive version of Facebook's metaverse characters uh -huh. it, it's worse <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's even worse than that uh so we're like these these bot characters floating heads floating hands and floating torsos uh and that's all we had and i heard about it through uh some people many people and then i tried vr chat when 
uh, and might I add, I already had my VR headset. I got the HTC Vive the first year it came out. So I've had in VR, and I, I never played VR chat and desktop until many, many, many years later recently um, when I'm doing uh, Blender work. <clears throat> and that's because desktop was not great until recently for me. Oh. Oh. What about you, Zark? He's getting a drink. Don't bother the man. But that's a what great the hell? time. You <laughs> You're gonna catch him with his pants down. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Pants. He's like, hey, his pants down. All right. So it's actually funny how I got involved with the uh, VR chat. Um, the guy that I was working with, um, one day I, I just like went over to his house to help him out with some stuff, and he was like, "Yo, I got this headset. Like, you want to like try it? Oh, it's been sitting there." And I'm like, "Sure. Let me see what it's about." And uh, the only thing that I could like even think about was like going on YouTube, watch some videos, or uh, going on to VR chat, seeing some videos on like TikTok and stuff like that, seeing people running around trolling. I'm like, all right, let me do it. Get in there, and like, I see people building like stuff that I was like previously building in Blender like before, and uh, I had already been taking some courses on um, Unity and Blender. So I was like, this is cool. Like, this is just gonna test me out to see what I can do here, mm. and. Uh, I just started getting into VR chat deeper and deeper to the point to where like building worlds, like clubs and stuff like that. So it's been a ride. It's been a wild ride, like really fast. I've been here for a few years. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. Yep. It's been a real fun, wild ride. Oh, what about you, voice Smith? Indeed. I've um got into VR chat like, a little bit over a year and a half or two ago, I started playing on my laptop. And then after about 500 hours, I got a VR headset. And then I've been playing some games and stuff for about six or um, seven months. But then I got started got getting involved with, you know, the like clubbing scene, got to like meet a lot of people and then get in, get involved with um, Quantum Networks when I got to meet. Um, aqua and have just been enjoying hanging out meeting other um world creators and getting um involved with networking um for the group as well oh we have looks like and we also have a new friend uh, we got a new a yes, new person I come late. in i unfortunately had a gpu update <laughs> ding, 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 ding. oh well, well you can come a little closer over here over well, here a little bit please you can stand in front you of can us. get that, uh, that, oh, that's tiny, so why not? He's tiny. Oh, okay. He's tiny. Oh, okay. Just one. I didn't want him over there. So going over there trying to play in the water like he had to go pee. But, you know, and everything. I've got a question. We, we got a question for him for the same thing, so. You get your own little You got to move your cameras around, sir? Yep. Fire there you go. You get your own little camera, really. <laughs> All right. So if I'm understanding correctly from what I just heard from everyone, um, the... <laughs> Well, the question was involving what, how did I get in VR chat? We'll ask you a few questions. Yep. Because the say was right. they asked, they answered earlier. How, how did you get involved with Quantum Networks and how did you meet them and how did you get into VR chat? Got it. So first question, you said, how did I get in Quantum Network, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. The way I got into Quantum Network was actually not typical. Okay, I am on an uphill. Uh, the was not typically the way you would expect. I mean, initially, I was friends with VR Smith for around about two years now, and we met up. Been like... It's been about almost two years now. Oh, okay. That was that long. Back in one point four of Einkrad. Um, so. I initially met him, and he knew a lot about me, especially with development. I love to develop avatars, like do modifications to avatars. I mean, my own avatar that I have right now, I've been working on for well over two years now. Um, he said, hey, I got this really cool group that you might actually thrive with. And all of a sudden, I had a surprise interview with uh, Rose and VR Voicemith. Uh, they were like, give me a shotgun interview. 
and they liked my they liked how I knowledgeable I was, how many different things I could do with audio technician, and well, I'm getting a crash course of Blender courses thanks to Rec. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I have not started the Anvil. We'll talk about that after this. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Uh, all right. Second question you said was, "How did you meet these wonderful folks?" I met these wonderful folks again through VR Voicemith. I think I just covered that a two and one on the prior question. Fair enough. And the <laughs> but last... yes, v VR Voicemith. Yes, I'll just go clarify it more clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, VR Voicemith initially has got got me to meet the rest of the crew. Um, over time, I started to get to know people. Of course, Rose was the first one that I met. I then started working with Dimensional on working with the audio problems that the world was having initially and trying to point out little details that were like very big and flawed. And so we got those knocked out within, what, a day or two? Less. It was a couple of, not even an hour, you know, 40 minutes or something. Like I said, within a day. Um... And the third one, the third question, how did I get into VR chat? Yes. Jeez, that is a question and a half. I started VR chat, get this, almost five years ago. Wow. I don't even remember, besides my very first interaction with uh, VR chat, ironically, the black cat. Hmm. And that is when I actually lost interest in it because it was just overwhelming. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to speak to. And I was absolutely shy back then. Gave it like maybe a few months. So we're talking like a span of six, seven months later. I decided, okay, here, let me try again. I went in and this time surrounded myself with a different set of people in a different community. I then met a couple of friends who showed me the prison escape world that's where i found my very first community that i joined the lpd mm. from there i also joined einkrad and that's where i met voice which Ooh. led me to the present situation oh okay i got another question line got another question i gotta ask my famous question Shoot. You know, most of the time you run from them, but hey, we won't go there. Um, for every, this is a question for all of you, not just anybody. When you first came into VR, he brought it up. First thing you did when you saw what you came into VR and you're going, oh my God, are you serious? And ran for the hills to get the hell out of the goddamn way. What, are, what was your first reaction when you saw in VR that literally made your skin crawl? What would it be? Who wants to go first? <laughs> That's actually easy for me. Like said, I can, well, I will you're never on the left side, we're going for the left or the right. <laughs> <laughs> that is an easy question for me. What ultimately made my skin crawl and run was just the absolute social anxiety that I just had. All at once. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, good to know. Are you asking what's what made them run, or what's the weirdest thing they saw in here? The, the weirdest thing they saw in here that uh -huh. just drove them, just made their skin grow. Yeah. Okay, that's when a they first question. started. Kind of threw two for does, one. Does it, does it yeah, I can do problem? that. Sorry, I play riddles. I play riddles a lot. Does it, Sorry. Sometimes does it, does it have to make yeah, my skin it's crawl? Fine. No, just Whatever. the weirdest thing. Whatever. One or the other. Take one. Sometimes trying to decipher yeah. raptors, like trying to decipher uh, uh, I got Shakespeare. One. I got one. I got one. I got one. So uh, there's some games I can't remember some of them, but like you tell them, like you know you get like the volume up in your in your ears and you play those scary games. It's gonna crawl. Your skin's gonna crawl. At least for me, it does. Mm. I get I get the heebie-jeebies when I get like scared. So I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> actually, okay. Oh. Actually, I I got something, and this happened to me uh, actually like three days ago. Mm. So I was in a world. Uh, 
with my significant other. We were just hanging out, right? We're, we were in there about three hours or so. For the first three hours of it, everything was perfectly fine. There was just chill music and everything. And then after three hours, I hear creepy, bad, subliminal messages. Oh. Playing in the world. And I... And it made me feel like there was something standing behind me, so. Oh. See, that's that shit I'm talking about. It's that shit, like. <laughs> no, it, it, like, it, you, 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 all right, so you, you so you guys know, like, in horror games, how you got the twin little girls, right? And they're creepy, and they're talking at the same time. It was that, but with bad subliminal messages. Like, it, it, it felt uh, like it was evil intent. Ah. Uh. The uh, the Shining Girls. Yes, indeed. Dude, the Shining Girls. Yeah, exactly, exactly <laughs> that shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, indeed. What What about either of you, Voice Myth or Erection? One that I could think about that's one of the worst is when you get a bunch of like, like sometimes trolls will come in and then they'll just. And sometimes it'll just be one, but especially it's annoying when there's a group of them, and then they all start harassing you or one of your friends, or they target someone and go around and start doing it. That and you see that every now and then. But those are some of the those are some of the words like something I just hate, like just don't disdain. I don't really like in VR chat. I guess it doesn't make my skin crawl, but that's something that's just me and my old. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I'll I'll actually take All you guys right. to the world, and we you guys can sit in there for three hours and experience what I experienced. So, oh, okay, no, I'm good. Creepy stuff That's doesn't good. bother me. It creepy shit doesn't bother me. I hide in plants yeah, all the time. People well, freak. Mm. Well, no, the thing is, it's stuff. supposed to be like a sleeping world where you go there, you sleep in VR and stuff. But it's like, why would you put that in a sleeping world? <laughs> <laughs> that creepy ass shit. Put it in all the sleeping worlds. That's nightmare so nobody me. sleeps. That's the general idea. So you don't sleep. <laughs> if you're like me, I go yeah, in the sleeping supposed... worlds and there's a whole bunch of people sleeping there. I'm the noxious asshole trying to keep everybody awake. Well, it's that's like just a, me. It's like yeah, a, I support it's, that. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's a, it, it's a very sleep. small sleeping world, though. So it's like mm. made, meant for like two people. To just go in there. Ah. What about you, Rection? About me? Yeah, uh, I haven't thing. found that yet. I got one word for you. Yes. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Fair Nothing. We... I have not had no. that yet. I have been in a very weird. I've been in a lot of weird situations, but nothing to make my skin crawl. I've been with furries. I've been with not super work events. I've been with clubs this with drunk sense. people. I've been with lots of different things. But nothing has freaked me out to the point that I want to take my headset and throw it at my wall. Okay. Oh. Because in order to do that, I'm going to need haptic suits. I'm going to need hyper-realistic graphics that I can't tell the difference between real life. And then we can get that with me. That's, mm. that's why I make games. Okay. So it's one of the reasons sense. why I make games. Alrighty. Now I want more immersion. Oh, more immersion. That'll come eventually. Now, based on uh, back into what Quantum Networks is, you guys mentioned you start off making club worlds and then you do games. What led you to? Uh, what made you guys go from club worlds into games? Uh, actually, I can answer that one. So, originally, what made us go from doing club worlds into games is because me and Zark started talking about VR MMORPGs and how a lot of them have been letting a lot of people down. Uh, so they'll promise like, oh, you can build your house anywhere on the map or something like that or something along those lines. And then you can't even get a house when the game comes out. Mm. And then I'm, I'm not trying to diss on any other games, but I played a game that slowed you down when you aggroed something so you could not dodge it unless you like use the teleport feature uh -huh. so you can dodge any attacks or get away from it 
and that took some time to get used to. I eventually enjoyed it, but eventually it was just to a point to where you were only getting on to do one in-game raid and then you were done for the week. Oh. So it wasn't really replayable content. So I me mean, and Zark me, wanted to, yeah. For so me, for me I, I feel like uh, I feel like for me wanting to get in, uh, getting making games was something before I was even in then uh vr chat so um it was gonna happen at some point anyway so and a lot of the stuff that i had uh, messed with in unity was some game mechanics so it just was a matter of that we were gonna transfer it all like the energy probably into both because i feel like it's pretty easy to manage um both or we're getting there at least you know okay yeah. So, so another long-term goal of Quantum Networks isn't just developing games, but we also want to get into like throwing music festivals, IRL, and in VR chat, and kind of mixing both. Mm. Or in VR in general, it doesn't have to specifically be VR chat. If something comes out that's better for it, then we're, we'll move to that. But until then. VR chat. Okay. So how much experience in any of that do you guys have in your long-term goals and short-term goals? This is kind of brand new for me. Even in, like, I've I've put events together, but never in a sense. Mm. Same, spread word, push notification, and, you know, have the product, you know? Okay. It's almost the, uh, if you build it, they will come. Mm. What about the rest of you? So the biggest thing I got going for me is that I actually have actual authentic music production experience with music and audio engineering. So the biggest thing I got for going for me is that I've been doing this. This is something I've done and love for so long. And I believe because of that they saw that it was a very good fit position for me especially since it is very important for a game to have good audio as well as good visual because i mean you can have the best visuals in the world but it's not going to tie it together if you don't have the audio to match it um so i feel with my position it's a big responsibility and i love it because this is something i can proud proudly be a um, a part of especially to help with quantum networks with the audio side of things especially when it comes to the events i have actual theatrics experience behind the light board and soundboard so this is stuff that i have existing knowledge and schooling that i went to and done hmm. okay what about youtube rection and <clears throat> voice <clears throat> well I have what I have to offer in terms of skills is as a 3D artist, environmental design, management, avatar creation, animation, programming, graphic design, AI engineering, and so forth, etc. Mm -hmm. um, as a generalist, I can do a little bit of everything, but professionally, I do 3D art and management. Okay. So. <clears throat> Uh, that is what I have to offer QN, and I'm going to be helping them with, as Farak had said, I'm training him and training the rest of everyone in the 3D art team, mm. as well as designing tests for our QN hiring process so that when we hire somebody, we know that they can do the job professionally. Mm. Okay. Good to know. Indeed. I enjoy something that I bring to the table as I have done a lot of like networking I met a lot of people and a lot of different world creators I met a lot of avatar creators I've led a lot of like club owners and just really chill people and people I'm really glad I've met um and that's how I was able to meet Firecat a while I've met him and I've been a long time friend with him but then I was introduced to Rection um through Rocking Horse and just been able to like you know introduce Rection to like a bunch of the people that I've been able to work and meet, and we've even been able to help out some other world um, 
creators that have gotten involved with quantum networks as well. So that's very exciting. I really enjoy that. I'm also um, getting into doing stuff with like, like voice acting. I got a mic set up and I'm going to be doing that and getting involved with that um, in the game as well as in quantum networks. Okay. So from a lot of, from all of everything you've, you guys said so far, you guys mentioned making a game. How are you guys doing it now? Is it in VR chat or is it also outside of, or is it outside of VR chat? So the game itself is going to be standalone. We are going to be making some smaller games in between working on the big game and getting those out as well so we can get funding for the bigger game. But it's going to be a standalone VR MMORPG, as I've said before. Uh and we're, we're still going in the to try and we're still yeah. in the brainstorming part of 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 it all you know mm. this is very new um quantum networks itself has been a thing for three months now so i think a lot is coming it's, it's showing up really fast and you can see the potential that everyone here has and i think that this is something good just to push forward with so a lot of brainstorming is coming together to push these ideas yeah Okay. Hmm. I have a question for him, Lauren. Okay, gentlemen, knowing that you're designing designing a game and everything, what's the goal? The bare overall goal that you guys are knowing it's a game, but what is beyond that goal? There's always you got this, but we want to be someday up here. You're down here, but you want to be up here. Gotcha. A, a very clean MMORPG, yeah, yeah. Okay. Another you know, gotcha. like goal with saying, the game. Yeah. It's like, we, we've, we've had mechanics in games where we've played, and it's just like, <laughs> why is this so sluggish, and why is this so broken? <laughs> yes. You know. So, the basic I'm sorry, no offense. Of this, hold on, hold on. So, Not to yeah. interrupt, but he's over here waving his hand like he's in class. <laughs> Teacher, can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta get a pass. <laughs> Not to interrupt you, keep going with what you are, but we know who to go to next. But I just look at we're going, holy shit, what the hell is he raising his hand for? Okay, so, go. So, another, another goal with our game being a VR MMORPG game. I think we're going to try and set a, try and set a new standard for VR MMOs in general because I feel like some of the other dev teams that have been putting out these VR MMOs have been rushing it to the point to where they've been trying to find loopholes around everything. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do that. I don't think these guys want to do that. I think we want to put something out that we're proud of and that everyone else can enjoy too. So, it can be like a new standard. Hmm. Yeah, VR gaming itself is still like an early stage. So, I don't think there's really many forefronts to have like a blueprint for others to follow. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So you had your I mean, hand raised. There's becoming a standard. Oh, sorry. There's becoming Honestly, a standard. Be oh. Sorry. <laughs> I'm confused. I have two brain cells. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, yeah we're off. I had. It, it's becoming a standard because if you look on Steam, there's about 20 new games coming out, and about five or to eight of them are good. Hmm. Like, we now have Rust VR, finally. Yeah. That, and you also see a bunch of dev teams working on VR. Whoa. Oh. I broke that. Huh. Eh, it'll buff. If you're enjoying this, please, I would heavily suggest to follow us on any of our social media. If you go down in the thingamabob, down that way, we have a card, metaversedgen.card.co, with all our social media. Feel free to come follow us at any of those places. We've got Discord. We hang out there all the time. Feel free to come chat. Also, we have a Patreon with two people who joined up now, and I'm going to give them a little bit of a shout out. One of which is Training Fangs, who's a really good friend of ours, and Forbidden Zero, and also a good friend. So please 
Come follow us. Come hang out. Ooh. That's my cue to go. Enjoy the video. Mods of games as well, like the Cyberpunk mods. Mm -hmm. You have Elden Ring and all the main, every big AAA title game has a mod team of devs working on the VR yeah. com compatibles. <clears throat> exactly. And then there's that yes. other mod as well yeah. that auto VR converts as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's like a toolkit. But I, I would say the reason we're getting more games is because Meta or Facebook just released, I think a couple of years ago or last year, about 2,000 developers from their contracts. Oh. Wow. So it's going to be a lot of games being made that they were holding and they were making no games. They were being paid to not make games. Really? They're paying them not to make games? Yep, they're paying them and they're just twiddling their thumbs. They don't have, they don't have enough games for all the developers to put on task. So they just be contracted, get paid, but no uh, games would be made because they hired like four thousand people, and then half of them were just to mop them up for their competitive practice. Ah, uh, anti-competition. Then they just released them. Yes, which there was no one competing against them. So, uh, in my eyes, so I don't know why they would do that. They're just being. Mm. Very, very naughty. Very naughty indeed. Monopolies will always be a thing with large companies. If you got people who is your competition, best way to, to deal with them is buy them out. Oh. And you, yep. you had your hand raised. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I had my hand raised. Like I said, I was raised with uh, manners, so I I will no, raise my hand rather than I, interrupt. <laughs> I'm just picking. I'm just picking on you. I'm just picking um, on. You. I do it all the time. Anyway, um, so my biggest thing that I think I can safely say for all of us as a long term goal, at the end of the day, is just doing what we love, doing everything that we enjoy. We enjoy our fields of the aspects that we're doing. And I think that's ultimately the big. It's the satisfaction of everyone enjoying what we created for what we enjoy doing. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Indeed. Yeah. So, with your game, how far into the planning process do you, are you guys into, and do you guys are you uh, do you know what you're getting yourself into? I so yes, I think we have a. Uh... A good solid idea we have a roadmap planned out we've had uh, multiple meetings we're running a few more to get all of us on the same page to you know um run the first steps you know it's kind of like figuring out where to start mm. you know okay hmm. do you guys have any storyboards made yet or are they all just kind of getting all the pieces laid out A lot of it is um, concept mm. and um, written, written down ideas and some um, some art here and there. But um, yeah, it's slowly coming together. Okay. So you guys have all been. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of whiplash, so I do apologize. You guys said you also started this whole thing making uh, club worlds. How long were you guys doing that before you switched over to the wanting to make a game? So originally in like October, beginning of October, we started making some clubs and I was, I was one of the head designers. He was the main builder. I was head designer. He was main builder. Mm. So he came to me with a world and we turned it into a mega world, but we originally had the quantum networks base hall, mm. and it was basically was just the very this first hall. Venue. Yes, it was the very first venue of our world, and it was basically just this hall, and it had audio linked lights on the walls, and floor, with reflective floor, and. And the audio like link was hooked lights to... that would run up the floor. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yes, it, it 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 basically showed you when the base was on, when the two mids were happening, and then when the treble was active. Mm. And you can control the lights in the world, and 
it was it was it was a vibe every yeah a lot of people I, responded yeah we, we, we a lot of people responded for like our first night like just as a soft launch we got i think it was like 64 people that came in like and that's like for being nobody that had no like recognition kind of you know it was pretty cool well, for us to pop up that way hmm. so with is it... sorry and then the and and then the second the second event we actually peaked the world at eighty with a twenty person queue. So oh wow, that was that was very exciting. That's that's mm -hmm. quite impressive mm -hmm. for a second wow. for a second event. <clears throat> Most clubs or a lot of clubs starting out can barely get anywhere near that. So kudos to you guys. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. Well, yeah, so that, and, all of... and a lot of that my building all that was my building so it kind of like made me understand um how how like thing? optimized i could really make something hmm? yeah we should have a talking stick <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> talking stick <laughs> well if you're gonna beat anybody leave me out i'm gonna no don't don't pull me don't pull me into the beating the stick raptor on a stick to be the stick what yeah. raptor yeah, raptor on a stick yeah no yeah why not yeah here we go so, again um so another good uh good question kind of looping into the previous topic as well how long did it take you guys to develop that world and the planning phase as well um so a lot of the planning is kind of like off the top of like the vibe and a lot of it is built around the community of whoever that we're building it for so um we have we sit down we have a conversation with them we ask them like colors and some kind of stuff like uh what kind of vibe they, and just kind of like judge their character mm. and um then i'll go into blender and i'll just kind of like put something together for them that i think would match their community and what they asked for in a in a venue and it's usually every single time it's been a success for you know people liking it and it being optimized as well so it's been home run since mm. is it is it easy to run a mega club world for a quest because i know i've heard that questifying anything is a pain in the dick <laughs> Um, so for for mm -hmm. me, um, building the things in Blender, mm. um, I can control the optimization, mm. so I don't have a problem with that. For people that maybe um, don't have much knowledge in the optimization part of creation in Blender, it might be a little harder. But just a little research, and uh, you, it's really it's really not hard at all. To to be a hundred percent honest, maybe there might be a few steps that they are missing, but it doesn't take much time mm. at all. Okay. What kind of techniques do and you guys the... have? Ooh. I apologize. Oh, yeah. I'm going to rapid fire questions, yeah, and so then... please run me over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the behind the scenes of creating the events that go in the world and working with the groups that are in the world to make sure that their event goes smoothly, there's no mess ups or hiccups in their venues. Uh, that that's a little difficult to get the event going, but after you, after it started and rolling, it gets easier as the day as the night goes on. Hmm. Okay. So with the optimization for quest, I want to go back to the question real quick. I I do apologize. Me, I'm I'm not trying to ignore all uh all five of you. I just want brain cell to have to dress one person at a time or else I'm going to forget the entire thing I said prior. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So what kind Excuse of, me. with since you said the optimization for quest is good with, easy with knowledge, what kind of techniques do you, are there out there for optimizing for quests? Um, just basically making sure like when you're building anything, just um, keep them to, uh, limit them to a certain amount of polys. Um, which is just face count on a on a object, and um, like for me when I build the venue inside of Quantum Networks, I usually tend to keep each venue under ten megabytes, mm. which is still really high for optimization levels. 
um, but it's uh, it's proven. So just kind of controlling your texture size and your your object size and your poly counts. It's it it's pretty simple. Okay. And with you, Kieran, how much experience prior to Quantum Network did you have in planning and running events? So uh, about two years ago, I was helping a lot of my friends with their groups before the VR chat groups were a thing. I was helping get DJs, plan events, set up staff with those groups. So I have prior knowledge on how to get people in there, how to organize it in a way to where it runs smoothly. And then while in there being able to make sure everyone's having a good time and there's no like big drama going on. Mm. Cause that's what, and that's one thing that quantum networks doesn't tolerate in our events is drama. Everyone's there to have a good time. If you have drama, leave it at the door, pick it up when you leave. Mm. Okay. Now I'm going to whip it. Shoot away. Go ahead with yours. Go ahead with yours. I'm well, gonna, what the hell? I'm going to whiplash this entire thing over <laughs> to you. How much, how much is transferable over to VR and gaming with the audio side of your skill set? That's a difficult one, because with a three-dimensional environment, that is actually going to constantly change, especially when you look left or you look right, because it's not like when you have just a 2D audio space with a 2D screen. So there's a lot more spatial awareness that you have to go and take an account for. Um, a lot of, and honestly, a lot of it, I spent a lot of time behind Ableton and Ableton is my DAW software that I use. Um, so when it comes to that kind of thing, when I'm designing audio for, especially with my avatar, cause I have a lot of actually, believe it or not, I have quite a few audio sources on this avatar. Um, with, when it comes to things like that, it can get very difficult, very quick especially since it you have to know like what's a really good area for the fall off and um making sure it's not a full just 2d audio hmm. sorry about that, that was right the half behind me <laughs> <laughs> we've been noticing that you got one hell of an audio back there right now playing i thought what the hell he's yeah, watching no, i want to hear that's my <clears> wife <throat> actually that's actually my wife um but yeah. So basically, when it comes to the 3D audio, it's definitely something you have to take into account for fall offs and things like that, especially, I mean, when you have the ducking, getting that involved, making sure that the there's a good ducking zone before it starts getting quieter and quieter. Otherwise, it's just going to sound very weird if you got like someone standing right here and then the person you're talking to is literally right here to your left or right. And it sounds like it's they're a lot quieter just from moving one step back. And that's not something you want. Because realistically, when you think about it, apply VR chat, for instance. They have a very good audio ducking system already in place. And it's the same concept. You don't want to just take one step back and then all of a sudden you can't hear them a lot quieter because you just took one step back. So you want to make sure that there's a high amount of concentration before you start falling it off or it's just going to sound bad. Hmm. Okay. And adding that 3D audio space gives it the sense of immersion that is definitely needed, especially when it comes to virtual reality. Hmm. So sound is, uh, besides sight, is just as important for immersion as visual cues. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. So with with audio, how 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 is it easy to incorporate into VR chat with what your skill set, what you went to college for? Um, so it can be and it can't be because Unity will be Unity. And mm. it is just a terrible software in general. I much prefer to use other softwares. Uh, I had 
a lot of crashes with Unity before in the past, especially with my own avatar. Um, I think the biggest problem that I have is that I get a little reckless. And, well, you don't gain any experience if you don't break things. That's how I've always done things. Hmm. Okay. And you had a question. Yes, I do. And this is for all of you. Knowing that where you're going with what you want to do, what would be the best idea that you think VR chat would improve on to make your job easier? Um, That's a really good question. God, I got a good one for once? Holy shit. That's a first. Better write that on the fucking calendar. <laughs> Holy crap, I come up with a good right. one for I, once. Usually it's weird shit. To, being able to, like, join in um, as a home group, probably. Like, so when you join in, when you get on, people are already inside that you're that group that you're in. You're, like, you spawn in the home there. You get right to business. Maybe something like that. Ah. Uh. Okay. Rather than loading up and having to join or ask. Yeah, I agree. And I think a way they could make things really nice is make other ways, like make more ways so that VR chat can easily connect to like Discord. Cause there's that, there's some ways you can do different things with it. You can have VR chat plus groups, but more so for like Patreon and world supporters. Um, if they were to make it so that the worlds could very easily coincide with with discord in certain ways that would be that would be extremely nice if they could maybe have that as part of the vr plus group and then you link to discord and then they were more closely working together and doing improvements to make it easier for players to get involved Spence, didn't we meet someone that had that exact system it, that's that's an api yeah, integration it's a, system it's a system it's a system it's not like what vr chat's doing there are people that have this no system, you no can't. it's it, not it's made something. but it's there Mm. Yeah, it's something you but can get, but it would be interesting if having that, that API integration. I do. I have to agree with uh, VR Voicemith. I mean, having an API integration just natively in VR Chat would probably be a lot smoother than having to do like custom ones inside of World. So basically, kind of like how they have the companion app. Uh, now you can actually just pre-download existing packages that they recommend. And having like say an API package that you can just simply import rather than having to hunt down for a custom one yeah that would definitely be very beneficial especially for patreons vr plus groups and stuff like that hmm mm -hmm. okay very good point yeah, maybe an app store maybe an app store inside of uh vr chat where i can click on firefox or you know whatever whatever app you would like to be in discord mm. instagram facebook TikTok, okay you know, whatever you Okay. Yeah, that would be really cool if they had Discord working more closely with like VR chat and other things, and they eventually became integrated into the game. So you could just go to a Discord tab, like how you have all your VR chat tabs. Go to a Discord tab, and then call someone on V on Discord while still being in VR chat and not having to tab out. Mm. And then you could just go in there, give someone a call, and get on call with them. Maybe even voice call through VR chat of what they're seeing and have a talk, conversation with them sit tell them what you're doing and like then maybe like go and hang out with them or meet up or make plans or just to talk to people without having to go to that world or maybe the world full things like that that could be an alternative but if they were to integrate it yeah like you were saying with vr chat that could look very nice It'd be a very cool thing okay well you also have ovr toolkit for pc v pc vr users where you can Go to your fancy wrist, hit the thing, and then you're immediately into. I don't want to download Indeed all you these do. programs you, on my computer. You. I really don't want to download all this stuff to do that. That's, that I, should just I, be in the game. The man. ones that yeah, I use is XS Overlay. And I use that. I use XS Overlay, but the thing is, too, mm -hmm. people that don't want to or don't like want to really download software also for Quest users, I don't. it mm. would make it a lot easier for them to. Um, be able to um, use their Discord without having um, to use that are not able to use the overlay. Okay, you got a good point there. Oh, 
add more tools to the tool, the tool section inside the the foam here. Hmm. More tools? Why? I ask. How would more? What kind of tools would you look for? Like, like he said, like the uh, play space. These are these uh, all these integrated like downloads that you need to you know download. Essentially, I would just have to go into the tools and trigger play space, and then I just do it. You know, it would be something that VR chat should just come with it by default. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but anyway, um, no, and it's understandable because in order to get things, you would have to have, yes, the access overlay or over advanced settings for like play space moving and all kinds of different things. But this is only available for PC only. And of course, I've seen so many different Quest users who were like, I would go to many worlds because being a part of LPD, I see so many people, so many worlds and whatnot. Um, I would tend to just move around with my play space mover depending on the situation, or I would use my overlay and they're like, how are you reading all that stuff? Because there's a group when we were doing meetings with a group, I would just simply look here on my wrist because I have an overlay with all my notes. And they're like, how are you knowing all that stuff with just looking at your arm overlays? And Yes, this is only achievable through PC means. And I think having something of the sorts that we're able to be do it on Quest, yes, would be nice. But at the same time, could be very challenging to implement knowing from prior history of development standpoint. Because um, that is not an easy thing to achieve because, yes, I'm using an external program, but putting it natively can be very difficult especially with the existing Guardian system that Oculus Quest used. And basically the way it works is it manipulates the play space. Hmm. So what is the Guardian system? I've, I've never heard that before. So because I do have a Quest, I can definitely safely tell people, and I also, it's on the Rift S, ironically enough, too. Guardian is the inside-out tracking system for the play space and visual ground of so the headset can see with its mm. inside-out tracking. I didn't mean to pull my cheeks. <laughs> I forgot my cheeks had fist bones. But uh, because, of, because of Quest's inside-out tracking, it uses Guardian tracking, which I think, if correct me if I'm wrong, HTC's new inside out trackers do something of the same sorts. Uh, mm. Because the new three the new HTC Vive trackers, they're inside out tracking. And I thought that was the absolute coolest thing, but they're only supported for HTC Vive headsets right now. Um, but they're using basically I'm gonna use say a guardian system of their own to achieve the same exact uh, tracking ability as what Quest and the Rift S is using, as well as pretty much all those other headsets that are doing inside-out tracking. It's become the norm to have that inside-out tracking because not everyone wants to have to put real light stamp houses inside of their houses. For instance, this full-body tracking that I have right now, it's not a lighthouse track. It's IMU-based. Hmm. And yes, Slime VR is very hard to get a hold of, of but it's not easy to set up, especially with standalone Quest. I've tried it already. It's not easy. Hmm. Okay. Thanks for answering what the, what the Guardian system was. I had no idea. It's the first time I ever heard the term. So would the Guardian yeah, system... Uh, it. Per, uh, would it be a problem with the Guardian system to play space move around? Okay. I muted my actual headphones, sorry. Uh, but yes, because of its Guardian system, that's how the headset sees. It's not going to be easy to manipulate the play space because Oculus doesn't have that capability in both the Oculus application and on the Quest because it uses that as a fundamental versus a open software like what Steam VR is. Because mm. yes, it will see it has its own like bound, but it's a boundary, not a actual play space. Mm. All that's what it is. So with Lighthouse tracking, it sees this area and it maps it out. But with the ability to play space because of OVR, 
Um, I just don't see it happening with current Oculus nowadays. Mm, fair point. I don't see how that... Well, after you explaining that, it may be hard. It may do some funny stuff with the headset. <laughs> yeah. it, it definitely would be tracking issue related for sure. I have no doubt about it. But until Oculus actually gets better with... I'm sorry to say this, but Facebook... Their programmers are, I don't know what they smoke. I swear they smoke weed half the time. <laughs> um, I, I've seen the HTML scripting do. of the website. It's it's god awful. I wanted to gouge my eyes out because <laughs> I actually went to class for web development. And oh, my God, that was the most unorganized scripting I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. But um because of that it's like i don't see it happening anytime soon until because i've noticed a degrade in performance with oculus ever since meta bought it um because when the oculus was oculus not meta um i noticed it was very optimus i was able to play vr chat on get this a 1050 a two gigabyte graphics card i was able to play vr chat stably now i can't because it's so unoptimized and that VR chat is already unoptimized as is, it can get very difficult and now you're having to have much demanding performance on both hardware as well as software. Mm. Yeah, exactly. We have to buy new PCs for like three to four grand every like five years or three years because VR chat can't optimize their shit. Well, to be fair on the optimization point, that's also equally on the uh, independent developers within the game as well because they use avatars for example if you have an avatar that has all the all the polygons all the things all the audio sources all the light sources most graphics yeah. cards aren't going to be happy with that and that's not necessarily on vr chat in that sense you still have to people who want to make things in vr chat as like a, a sandbox also need to know right. optimization too I have one argument to that statement you have just made. Mm. And that is, they used to, before Quest, used to be, you know that lovely system that says good, poor, medium, excellent, right? When you upload your avatar, it says poor, and you can upload it. Or it says very poor, and you can still upload it. Before Quest, you could not upload very poor avatars oh. at all. They restricted it entirely. And then eventually people complained, mm. and then Quest came in, and they said, we can't have that. And then we're like, they were like, oh, wait, hold on. We do need that. Never mind. We need that. Our Quest can't handle that. Uh, so they now only have the system for Questies. It's why you have, like, limitations, but then they remove that, too. So now you can upload anything you want as long as it exceed, doesn't exceed a certain memory limit, right? Yep. But what it used Ten to be... Ten megabytes. Yeah. It just won't render. And that's by... Uh, mm -hmm. That's not the games. That's... Quest software, as well as um, partnered with how Unity. They just program it that way, so you can't see them. Um, so the biggest Quest. thing, going off that, by the way, uh, the biggest thing I know so much about Quest is because, yes, um, we none of us here can see it because we're all PC, but this avatar does have a Quest side, and it was a pain in the ass to get it up because I had to remove so much off it, I had to optimize it, downscale it, just so much work goes into optimizing for Quest that it gets very headache inducing. And falling that back onto basically the game development side of things for us, it can get very tedious, especially when you have to downscale everything for Quest users. That's why when you see a lot of games on the Quest Store versus the Oculus App Store, there's a massive quality difference between... Um, take Beat Saber, for example. One of the most highest selling games with over 6 million copies. When you look on it on Quest, it's very downscaled. It's very blocky. And on top of that, you can kind of see it unrender on the edges of your vision. On PC side of things, doesn't happen at all. And plus, you have the full bloom quality that Quest cannot support. Hmm. Okay. Good to know. Yep. And to finish, if. VR chat wanted to optimize their game. If I was VR chat, 
I would just put the PC system back. Any very poor avatars. Nope. Nope, not uploadable. Because hmm. then you don't have the problem as much. And then if people want more features, they have to request it through the company. If the company doesn't want people putting a bajillion lights on their avatar, well, they're not going to be able to do that. Hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Quantum Networks, for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure getting to oh, meet and speak with yes. all of you. Um, where can people find you, too, you and your yeah, works? It's been, nice it's, been nice talking it's been a pleasure as well. Mm, Thank you very pleasure. much for having us. Thank you for letting us support us. Oh, no problem. I where don't think people find I don't, you. I don't think they heard you. <laughs> where can people find Quantum Networks if they wish to find you? Um, so... We have um, a few socials. Um, we have uh, TikTok uh discord we have a twitch and also if you want to just look us up in vr chat itself quantum networks q u a n t u m space n e t w o r k s quantum networks it should pop up you should you'll see it there okay well again thank you for giving us the time to get to speak and get to know with all five of you yes Two of you are return guests, and it's been a pleasure to see your faces again. And your faces again. Raptor, you know the... Th mm. As know as the as thing? You know the thing. Know the thing? Oh, boy, here we go. No matter what, folks, no matter who the people are, the engineers, the creators, whatever they're doing, these guys know their shit. If you have a brain to pick, pick theirs, because I sure fucking don't know what the fuck's going on. Because I'm too fucking old. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye, folks. See you later. Bye.